Here's what's coming up on contributing to a safer Ohio. Well, we already have a great relationship with the Patrol Academy and the State Patrol officers. And we just know that this is going to um, further that relationship, uh, bring us closer together as law enforcement. The Cleveland Police Department celebrates its first ever graduating class from the Ohio State Highway Patrol Academy. Also, several first responders from across Ohio were recognized at the 16th annual Star of Life Awards ceremony in Columbus. And Brian Hefflinger was only 18 years old when he lost his life in a car crash that involved alcohol. When I finally learned that statistic after all these talks we couldn't, the statistic where, you know, um, one in five kids drink, but one in a hundred parents think their kids drink, and it's true, and we were one of those parents. These stories coming up on this episode of Contributing to a Safer Ohio. After living at the Ohio State Highway Patrol Academy to learn the basics of police work for 21 weeks, the Cleveland Police Department cadet class took a moment to celebrate on graduation day. The ceremony on May 6 ended one chapter in a journey shared by Cleveland Police and the State Highway Patrol. The Ohio State Highway Patrol um, started training uh, basic police officers in 1968 in which uh, officers were trained by the State Highway Patrol from local uh, municipalities where there was two or three officers that came and, and made up a class of about 30 officers from various uh, jurisdictions. This class, the Cleveland Police Department, uh, is the very first class which we have trained an entire uh, unit of police officers. The uh, Division of Police is 150 years old uh, this year. And in that entire history, we have never sent an entire cadet class uh, out of the city to be trained. Uh, so we definitely trust the State Patrol Academy. Uh, we know its professionalism. Uh, we trust its leadership. As an operations sergeant at the academy, they're, they're like my children. I want, I, there's nobody here that wants them to succeed more than I do. We're teaching them basic academics um, that involves the law enforcement community. And then once we've put the book smarts together, they're able to do p practical applications, put the, the things that they learned in the books, put them to, to good use. They'll use that as a foundation, as a basis for their training as they continue their field training and the rest of their career. We do expect high standards of the people that come into our basic and our cadet classes. Um, we don't expect that as soon as they get off the streets, that's something we, we are able to instill in them. And we're very passionate about that. Team building is so important in, in the law enforcement uh, profession. For uh, most of the uh, trainees, they're assigned three-person room. So they're in close proximity with one another. So they must learn to trust each other. They must learn to depend on each other. Agencies can't operate in silos. And the things that affect, say, an agency in southern Ohio also affects an agency in northeast Ohio. So we have to get on board. We have to have similar training policies, procedures. And we have to all know that uh, change is inevitable. And we have to embrace it and, you know, make ourselves better. When Cleveland finishes their course here, they'll go back for an orientation period, like any other police agency, where they'll um, orient them into the way they do things, their local laws, their local statutes. We're going to evaluate and see if there are adjustments we can make in uh, how the officers are trained specific for Cleveland. Uh, but I do know that we are going to continue, at least in the short term, to send cadet classes here to the State Patrol Academy. After about um, three quarters of the way through, then you start to see the confidence in the way they march, the way they talk, the way they deal with themselves. and then. Uh, upon walking across that stage at graduation, you see a difference in that individual and you, you're proud to release them back to their agencies and know that they're going to succeed in whatever they do. I'm really thinking about how excited uh, the cadets must be. You know, they've been through a, uh, a 20 plus week uh, process here at the State Patrol Academy, although they haven't completely finished because they have to come to us, but uh, you know, really just thinking about their excitement for this day. Most of us have grown accustomed to the blaring lights and sirens of the ambulances and fire trucks that hustle through Ohio's cityscapes day and night. 
transporting a team of EMS providers to the latest emergency. We recognize the heroism and dedication of these first responders while on the scene, but rarely do we get to hear the personal account of the life saved or the danger faced when treating a patient. The Ohio Department of Public Safety's Division of Emergency Medical Services, the State Board of Emergency Medical, Fire, and Transportation Services, and the Ohio Chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians joined forces recently and hosted the 16th annual EMS Star of Life Award ceremony in observance of National Emergency Medical Services Week. They pay tribute to four individuals and seven organizations across the state whose overall contributions went beyond their basic duties and responsibilities and represent the finest traditions of their profession. Attendees of the ceremony heard the outstanding accounts of first responders fearlessly entering emergency situations, quickly assessing and deciding what needed to be done to save a mother, a father, or a child. Many of these first responders were also reunited with the patient they treated. One of our residents who was out mowing his grass on a wonderful day and um, collapsed in his front yard and his son notified his um, wife saying that daddy's down on the grass and immediately his wife had called 911. Um, our dispatcher, um, as she's trained to do, um, taught um, his wife how to do CPR um, and uh, immediately dispatch, um, dispatched all these guys and they were able to um, resuscitate him and he's here with us today. Ohio needs to see that there's been so many advances as far as emergency care. There's been a lot put into the system and this is one of the ways to show that, you know, the public is getting something out of it. The next time an ambulance or fire truck passes you on the road, keep in mind the sacrifices made of those who provide the day-to-day life-saving services of medicine's front line. In February 2013, an agent from the Ohio Investigative Unit met Dr. Bryan and Mrs. Cindy Hefflinger at Toledo Hospital. The Hefflingers were there to say goodbye to their 18-year-old son, Bryan, who was involved in a car crash. The agent was there at the request of Ottawa Hills Police to determine where Bryan was prior to the crash and if he had been drinking. Overwhelmed with grief, the Hefflingers explained that Bryan does not drink. We saw him, we were up in the stands and, and we watched them all cheering, you know how the kids are all cheering along the edge of the thing and I mean that's, it was just odd to see that, think that that's the last time we ever saw him. You know, what could happen? Just hanging out with friends in the basement. We went to bed and um, got woken up by some knocking on so the door. So three of his friends are at the door and they're, they're have you guys seen Brian? And I said, well, no. I mean, last time we saw him was at the game. I mean, and they said, well, we haven't seen him. He left the party and we don't know where he went. He's was, missing. What do you mean he's missing? And I was missing? thinking, yeah, did he go to Subway or something? But what it, do you mean he's whole, missing? The whole thing was odd. You knew something was desperately, desperately wrong. And she said, Cindy, there's been an accident. And I said, no, Margaret. No, there's been no accident. There can't have been an accident. And she said, you need to call, you need to have Brian call St. Anne's. And I said, no, there's nothing wrong. And she said, we don't know, but we think it was Brian. hoping that it was just something minor and I called St. Anne's Hospital and I said this is Dr. Hefflinger is my son there and they said um, he's not here anymore and I said well what happened and they won't tell me anything they just say um, you have to go to Toledo Hospital I said you know come on it's Dr. Hefflinger can you guys tell me what's going on you need to call Toledo Hospital so, so then 
that's when my life changed because I knew if he went to Toledo Hospital that it was life-threatening. And um, I called Toledo Hospital and I said, this is Dr. Hefflinger. And, um, you know, they wouldn't tell me anything. And I said, can you guys tell me what happened to my son? And they, they said, you just need to come to the ER. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't get in any accident. Just and, take um, your time and come in. So I, I knew what had happened, and I, and I told Cindy, I said, Cindy, he's dead. So he took us back, you know, we, we saw Brian, and he was just, he just lying there, you know, he was pale and um, just looked like he was sleeping, he had a sheet up to his neck and the breathing tube in, but just looked like he was sleeping. And, and he looked beautiful, as all I can remember. You know, I think it's important when something like this happens to not hide from it. And I think for our kids, it was very important to, for us to teach them that life goes on. You know, we addressed the alcohol and took that head on. You know, nobody's perfect and Brian drank, right? But it doesn't make it right and it doesn't mean that people can't learn from it. I'm not embarrassed by what my son did. He's a kid, he's a teenager. He does what a lot of teenagers do. Unfortunately, he died as a result, but there's no reason that we can't learn from it and try to impact people from it. And it hasn't always been easy to have to stand up there and talk about. Um, but it became glaringly clear to me what people really thought of my son. And it, it had nothing to do with alcohol. And I believe that the alcohol is our, our mission. If you're ever going to think about getting a car with somebody who's been drinking, please don't. Don't do that. Or don't get in the car yourself. And, and you know, Brian didn't have a second chance to make the right decision. So you have his second chance. And if he did have a second chance, do you think he would do the same thing again? Each and every decision and choice that you make has a consequence. And you need to think about what those consequences are. You can be whatever you want to be, but you can see that just one bad decision can take all that away. The Hefflingers have spoken to high schools throughout Ohio and across the country, as well as civic groups, hospitals, and the Ohio Investigative Unit's Alcohol Server Knowledge Program. OIU conducted a traceback investigation and determined Brian and his friends purchased alcohol at a liquor store in Toledo. Agents charged the clerk and the jury found him guilty. He was sentenced to the maximum six months in jail. By telling Brian's story, their story, they hope no other family has to ever experience their pain. You can find out more about Brian Hefflinger by logging on to brianmatters.com.